There they are. Is yours up yet? I don't know. I can't see. Yes, there. Well done. We showed them, didn't we? Fantastic. Matthew? Ah, there you are. Lunch in five minutes, so you better come and clean up. All right. What's this? Ah, yes, Cambridge. Albertine? Yes. I wonder how she's done. She got a starred first, whatever that is. Did she indeed? That's pretty good. In fact, it's pretty fantastic, especially after only one year. She was top of the whole exam list. Well, I suppose with Chucky. When did you hear? I didn't think the results were published yet. They went up a few minutes ago. Then how? Oh, yes, of course. Your telepathy. She must be thrilled. Mm. She is. Congratulations on your marvellous achievement, my dear. Now, the important question is, what are you going to do next? I'm afraid you can't collect your degree for another two years. We know that. Regulations. You have to keep nine terms before you can graduate. It's a silly regulation. Well, not for the average undergraduate. We don't get many people who can complete the course in three terms like you. In fact, I don't believe we've ever had anybody before. Not in 800 years. I'd like to do some research. Of course, but what? Cosmic energy. Cosmic? And anti-gravity. Anti-gravity. That's an interesting idea. Could there be such a thing? Could there be such things as quarks? Yes. My word, young lady, you do choose the most difficult areas. Anti-gravity, indeed. Where would you ever begin? Anti-gravity. I should begin with gravitational waves in space. Oh, I see. You're moving over from pure mathematics to astrophysics. That's right, Professor. Do you mind? No, no. It's very interesting. You'll have to let me have some proposals, something a little bit more specific. And then the university can consider funding you. Telescope. They're looking at the stars, of course. Well, I don't know. It may look primitive to you, but for us, it's very nearly the latest thing. What are you doing here? Just looking. Why, wait a minute. Aren't you? Albertine Mayer. Oh, yes. Our famous child prodigy. Hmm. You often go around talking to yourself. No. I was just thinking out loud. I see. I didn't know anybody was here. Obviously not. Who are you? Beatrice Little. Dr. Little. I'm an astronomer. Do you use this telescope? Of course. Otherwise, I shouldn't be here. Which brings us back to my question, what are you doing here? I'm hoping to do some research. Research? You? Into what? Cosmic energy and gravitational waves. What makes you so sure either of them exists? Oh, I know. I mean, that's why I want to research them to find out. Well, you're not planning to use this instrument. No, but I thought if I'm going to be working in astrophysics, I ought to know as much as I can about what other people are doing. I suppose that's fair enough. As long as you don't interrupt or try and interfere with my work. No. Will you tell me about it? Hmm. All right. Come along. And this is our largest and highest resolution instrument. Five kilometer Earth rotation synthesis radio telescope, consisting of four fixed and four movable dishes on an east west baseline. Why synthesis? Because it synthesizes the image we would have obtained with a single very large dish. Or rather, the computer does, and all the signals are fed into it over a period of time. So it's all controlled by a computer? Yes, of course. The computer steers the instrument and processes all the signals. Once it's set up and programmed, we can leave it to get on. Sometimes nobody goes near it for days. I don't know. What? Sorry. Just thinking out loud again. Please, may I see the rest of the observatory? Very well. Come along. I'll give you the guided tour. This is the control room. The mainframe computer isn't here, of course. I'll show you that in a minute. But this is the main control desk. Well, it doesn't look too complicated. 
No, it has to be simple. It's designed for professors to use. <laughs> and you type the instructions on the computer keyboard here? Exactly. We can give the computer a queue of items to be observed over a number of days, like this. First of all, we access. Track, that's what we want it to do. And then the name of the object, if it's already in the memory, say 3C48. That's object number 48 in the third Cambridge catalogue. And then the time we want it to happen, say 1500 hours on the 23rd. There. How are you getting on? Fine. Oh, you think you'll be able to do enough to convince them it's worth giving us the money? Yes, of course I do. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Bedtime now, though. Best leave it for tonight. OK, Dad. I'll just finish this bit. It'll only take a minute. Not too long, mind. You must get your beauty sleep, you know. Good night, Daddy. Now, right, darling. See you in the morning. Oh, Chucky. That'll have to do for tonight. You have done well. I am very pleased with you. Thank you. It's very interesting, and I am enjoying it. That is good. But I'm very tired now. I understand. Your mind needs to rest. Yes? That radio telescope. Yes? It is very primitive. Yes. But even so, it could be good enough. What for? To locate the position of my home planet. Do you really think so? That would be terrific. Yes. It would only be necessary to get into the computer which directs the telescope. I could do that through the phone line, if I knew the phone number and computer code. I know them. I read them this afternoon when Dr. Little was showing you around. Right. The number is 60290. The code 961437. Fascinating. <laughs> Utterly fascinating. So you think it's an acceptable subject for research, Professor? Speaking for myself, I have no doubts. No doubts at all. Thank you. But you mustn't count your chickens, my dear. Is there something wrong? I'm not the only person you have to convince. There's a committee. There's always a committee. Surely if you recommend us. You must realize that money is very short these days. There's a limit to the number of projects that we can afford to finance. But it must be obvious this is important work. <laughs> yes, that's what they all say. My work is important. No, the truth of the matter is that most of our funds are already allocated for the coming year. There's only one grant still available. Oh, that's all right. If there's still one grant available. There is. But you're not the only person who wants it. There's at least one other very good candidate. Who's that? Beatrice Little. Dr. Little, the astronomer. That's right. Do you know her? Yes, I have met her. Then you'll know how exciting and how important she thinks her work is. But surely, Professor, no matter how interesting her work is, it can't be as important as Albertine's. You think not? But what is it? 
She's investigating a new binary star. Yes, but what we're talking about is the discovery of an entirely new form of energy. Boundless energy from an unlimited source. What we're talking about, Mr. Mayor, is the search for boundless energy. It's not quite the same thing as its discovery, is it? Theories are one thing. Proof is quite another. It does exist. I know it does. And I know I can prove it. Hmm. <laughs> Very well, then. In that case, young lady, we must do our best to make sure that you get the grant. Right. Where do we start? I suggest that we publish this. You wouldn't object? Of course not. All right, then, leave that to me. And then you ought to give a public lecture on it. I'll see what I can arrange. What on earth? What's going on? My program. Is it? Look. I am looking, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be seeing. Signals. They are signals. signals. Yes, I know that, Chalky. Radio signals. Yes, yes, but they are special signals. Why? How? They are messages. You mean somebody is actually sending them? Yes. An intelligent life form. More than that. Oh, this is very exciting for me. Why, Chalky? What is it? They are my people. One of our colonies. Oh, Chucky, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy. So happy. Professor Ferris. Dr. Niddle, what are you doing here? Someone has been interfering with my program. How very tiresome for you, but I don't see what... Is that all you can say? It's more than tiresome, Professor. It's downright disgraceful. Yes, yes, quite. But... Weeks of work mucked up, the telescope realigned on an entirely new heading. Intellectual vandalism, that's what it is. But what has it to do with me? Someone has managed to break into the computer and make use of it to play with the radio telescope. But who? You may well ask. I racked my brain, wondering who could be so irresponsible. And then I realised I caught her snooping round the observatory. Oh, I've even been foolish enough to show her round and explain things to her. To whom? Why, to that infant prodigy of yours. You can't mean Aberdeen Mayor. That's exactly who I do mean. That precocious brat. No doubt she thinks the telescope is some wonderful toy. I find that very hard to accept. Have you any proof of what you're suggesting? Come in. Good morning, Professor. Oh, I'm sorry, are we interrupting? No, no, no. This is Dr. Little, Mr. Mayor. Albertine, I think you've already met. Yes. Hello, Dr. Little. How are you? Dr. Little is here on a rather serious matter. Oh, really? It seems that somebody's been making illicit use of the radio telescope. Oh. Do you know something about this? Of course she doesn't. How could she? Very easily, I'm sure. Albertine? Yes. Uh-huh. I knew it. Do you realise what you've done to my programme? I'm sorry. I was always very careful to put everything back where it was. Well, what use do you think that is, you little fool? That telescope is set on a continuous programme. It has to go on without any interruptions for several weeks. I'm sorry. I didn't realise. It's too late to be sorry. The damage is done. I have to start all over again. Albertine, I can't imagine what you were thinking of. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I promise I won't do it again. There. You've had your apology and a promise. I think we might put the whole thing down to, shall we say, youthful indiscretion. I'm very sorry, Dr. Little. I, I had no idea Albertine was doing anything like that. You have my word. There'll be no repetition. Shall we leave the matter there, then? Dr. Little? Hmm? I suppose so. Excellent. Now perhaps you'll have some coffee. No, thank you. I have a great deal of work to do. Good morning. Good morning. Albertine, how could you? Well, I dare say it was only curiosity and no permanent harm has been done, so let's leave it there, shall we? Thank you. We have more important things to talk about. Like this lecture you're going to give in London. You mean that 
it's on. It certainly is. And you better make a good job of it if you want that grant. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm most impressed. You must have done a great deal of travelling. No, not exactly. And don't tell me they're painted from photographs. No. Well... Uh, they're really just impressions of how Matthew imagines the places. Oh, I understand. From what you've seen on films and television and so on. Something like that, yes. In that case, I'm even more impressed. Quite remarkable. Albertine! Matthew! Isn't this exciting? Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Matthew. Well, you must be very proud. One man show at your age. No prouder than you must be. Hello, Albertine. Congratulations on your results. Thank you, Mr. Gore. Of course, having Chalky around certainly helped. Well, even so, it's a marvelous achievement. She'd have got a first in any case. It would have taken longer, that's all. Say, two years instead of one. <laughs> Come and show me your pictures. OK, I've done a new one of the windmill. Wait until you see it. How's she coping? With Chucky, I mean. She's coping very well. I must say, I still find it all rather difficult. I know what you mean. Well? Yes, sir, she came. Ah, excellent. And? They're obviously still communicating with each other. How very interesting. Keep up the surveillance. Cosmic ray is applied to elementary particles, usually protons, electrons, or nuclei of atoms, which travel through space at a velocity close to the speed of light. Some 90% of these particles are protons, the hydrogen of nuclear. When high-speed cosmic ray protons collide with hydrogen atoms in the interstellar medium, nuclear reactions take place between them, and a number of pions are created. These pions are unstable and decay almost immediately to produce a pair of gamma rays with an energy of about 100 mega... Equating this to a gravitational wave force, delta F, the electromagnetic noise in gravitational wave units is therefore... these experiments will be to identify and eventually collect gravitational waves from black hole events in galactic nuclei and stellar collapses, which are both impulsive sources and continuous sources such as binary stars, pulsars in the Crab Nebula. Thank you. lecture very much, Albertine, but I must say I found it rather theoretical. This grant is essentially for practical work. Now, should we decide to give the grant to you, do you really believe that you can achieve successful experiments? Yes, of course I do. Well, well, fancy that now. I wish I could be so certain of success every time I started an experiment. Uh, quite, quite. Surely, Albertine, you can only say that you hope your experiments will succeed. No, I know they will. Nonsense, girl. Nobody can possibly say that. I can. Albertine, please. I admire your confidence. But you must be aware of being overconfident, you know. Statements like that are irresponsible. And no more than I'd expect from someone who can interfere with somebody else's work. What do you mean? What, you haven't heard about this girl getting into the radio telescope? That incident was not to be talked about. Dr. Little agreed. Yes, well, Dr. Little was furious. And I can't say I blame her. The whole program was ruined. That's not fair. I said I was sorry, and she promised. Indeed she did, in this very room. But what did the girl do? She managed to make a connection with the computer controlling the radio telescope. Oh, and then fed in her own program. 
And she was using the telescope like an expensive toy. I was not. That's not true. Oh, dear. That's hardly the sort of behaviour one expects, now, is it? Yes, well, it's exactly the sort of behaviour I'd expect from an immature child. I mean, how can we possibly give our one remaining research grant to someone who is so irresponsible? I wasn't playing with it. I was searching for a planet. Well, that's not so difficult. There are billions of them out there. Not like this one. Oh? And what is so special about this one? Is it inhabited or something? If you must know, yes. Albertine. <laughs> Albertine. And did you manage to find this planet? No, but we did manage to make contact with some of the beings who've colonised other planets. What, little green men with horns and eyes in the middle of their forehead? No, it's not like that. We heard messages, signals from them. Oh, you made contact with intelligent life forms. You did. Something the world has been trying to do for centuries. I think I've heard enough. Thank you, Albertine. But you've got to believe me, it's true. I have a friend. From outer space? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Chucky, please! Help me! Please! I am Albertine's friend. My name is Chucky.